So um, quickly onto the agenda, um, we're going to be um, just opening up. I'm just going to open up with a, few, a bit of context setting to just say where we where we're coming at from um, this session. What does it mean to maintain old connections and build new ones? Um, you know, this is the new new normal. This is a virtual world we're living in right now, and things will not go back be the same. So uh, we have this. We have three sessions. Um, the three speakers we. First of all, how to be a networking ninja. I mean, I'm not claiming to be a networking ninja, but I'm sort of giving you some uh, tips on how, how to do that. Um, Sheena is there, then gonna come on with the do's and don'ts of LinkedIn, the, the LinkedIn guru. Um, I've learned a ton just observing uh, Sheena on LinkedIn. And then um, Peter is then gonna chime in with how can I help, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, and how to build social capital. Then we're going to go into Q and A, um, anything from our talks, and do some breakout rooms. And what we're hoping to do is to, for you, this is a chance for you to, because this is a masterclass. This is about um, sharing tools that you can use. This is an opportunity for you to practice. And we're going to be going in and out of the, of the breakout rooms to give a little tips and uh, pointers as well for, for you as you put some of these skills into practice, or at least discuss them amongst your peers. And then we'll come back for a quick wrap up. I mean, this agenda could be in a in a in, in a physical location. Isn't that amazing with technology? Okay, so without any further ado, I shall jump in with context setting unless there's any questions from anyone at this stage or any anything from my colleagues. I'll jump in. Okay. Um, actually, before I do, let's have a poll. Um, Justin, I think, is it? Or Daniel, you were going to do a poll. Great. Oh, poll closed. Um, we, we, we launched great. Let's have a poll. Can we hear from everyone? Have you had any meetings through Bella, the Brella platform during this conference yet? Okay. Let's give us a yes or no. Just to see where everyone's at with this technology. Okay. We have 36 in the room. Uh, 33 have voted. That's, that's good. That's good enough. Um, as you can see, it's 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 well i don't know if i'm surprised or not but it, it's it's telling so around just over half around 60 percent have used the brella platform during this conference to to um have some meetings and 42 percent aren't well at the end of this session i hope we're going to get a lot more into the mindset of networking and how powerful this is um and i hope you know we were to run this session again in a couple of days then that would, number would change. That's a good objective for our, uh, for our talk. So I'm gonna close that and I'm just gonna move on to the next slide. So context setting. So you'll see here that I've just um, give a few headlines. Um, bit, just to sort of illustrate that business has fundamentally changed, okay? Um, we relied so much on in-person in in-person participation like face to face not just with uh, being in the same meeting room but now with company you know company governance um you know with potential censorship and you know trade secrets that that your everything is being conducted through virtually so many questions arise about that um, about the, the the imbalance of of shareholder and manager um bias and power imbalance uh, that's that's changing as a result of this. Um, the spread of virus uh, drives corporate America into cyberspace for annual meetings. I mean, we are in a different a different era right now, and uh, you can even invite farm animals to liven up your Zoom meetings. Did you know? So there is an incredible array of opportunity and excitement happening in this space, and it presents enormous opportunity. So. Um, you'll notice as well that we're all working from home now, okay? Um, there aren't any of those water cooler moments where people meet informally, uh, getting grab a coffee together in the workplace, 
have lunch, um, where a lot of these um, spontane spontaneity happens and ideas are generated, we have to take that upon ourselves to, to make that happen. And people are more willing now. As a result, they are starved of those in-person interactions where they're working from home. And they're much more willing to just jump on to Zoom and have some connection. So yeah, people are, are now working from home a lot more. And as you see, companies like Twitter has said people can work from home forever. Technology is finally stepping up. The opportunity is immense. You know, this is the curve of internet users from around 1990 when this started. Um, this actually graph goes up to 2016 and only about uh, just over 3 billion, 3.4 billion in 2016, we're already at 4.6 billion. You know, that is an incredible growth. And what that means in the last decade or two decades is that the dynamics of of communication and co connection has changed rapidly. We're still in the era, era of mankind, uh, humankind, uh, catching up with this phenomenon, right? Evolution doesn't happen that far. So we're still in this catch up phase. And what does this mean for um, in-person interaction? And there's another insight here is that Okay, is the, the most connected nations are, North, are you know, areas of the world are Northern Europe, Western Europe, um, Northern America, and Southern Europe. There's no surprise there. And actually that's where most of the capital is uh, for investment. So doesn't that mean that there's an incredible opportunity to, to um, overcome this geographical divide that may be one of the reasons of, um, you know, of capital not being deployed uh, equally, we're going to see this rapid change because, um, you know, flying out to another place isn't necessarily required anymore. Um, uh, you know, anyone can make build up a very solid uh, relationship with a potential funder because this is the new normal. Um, I think you'll also remember there's this idea of six degrees of separation where back in the 70s, I think they, they, they um, you know, came up with this concept that, that someone, if you know someone, who, you know someone, so Larry knows Francis, who knows Gary, who knows Richard, and who knows Arnold, right? So um, everyone is connected. There's about maximum six degrees of separation between every, anyone on, on the planet. That has changed. <laughs> now, uh, with 4.6 billion users on the internet, um, anyone is a click away. Uh, it's not just six degrees of separation, but potentially if someone has a social media account, you can literally be a click away to 4.6 billion um, users on WhatsApp, on messaging, on a phone call. It's a matter of, um, of how do you, do you reach that? I mean, even LinkedIn, only go up to three degrees of separation, right? I mean, that's um, unheard of to go beyond. Um, so we're, we're way more connected now than ever before. And linked and technology is enabling that to happen. Um, and also, you know, there's this sobering uh, fact about um, previously about, you know, hopefully things are changing, but you know, that the, the, the lion's share of capital seems to be going to you know, white founders or, or um, North, not, about European and North American founders who have set up the startups in, on the continent. Well, you know, there's, there's huge opportunity now that, that before where we were separated by geography, you had to be in Silicon Valley to be, you know, a successful startup, or you had to be in Hollywood to be a successful actor or actress. Um, that doesn't happen anymore. The next tech startup hub is everywhere. Technology is enabling communities of excellence to be virtual now. I am, in, I am involved in, in several um, areas of interest of mine through Slack channels, through Twitter, uh, Twitter lists, through Facebook groups, through LinkedIn groups. And I don't have to be anywhere to find someone who has the same interest as me. Um, it's all out there. And this, um, 
this is is really about um, showing that um, entrepreneur connection, so peer to peer opportunity, um, is is like never before. So for opportunities for learning from so from entrepreneurs anywhere on the planet can can make a connection through another to another entrepreneur anywhere on the planet. So you don't have to be you know hanging out in the same bars and the same restaurants but you can be literally anywhere um and then make connections you know my my own experience with this was um building a network through a podcast right i set up a podcast partly to learn about um, social entrepreneurship and but also to build my network um because i was able to make a reach out to anyone on the planet who I respected and I wanted to make a connection. All I had to do was say, do you want to be on my podcast? No one refuses that invitation. So, you know, it, it, the, the opportunities here are unprecedented. And this raises a lot of questions, right? How to create serendipity? No longer are you in a, in a geographical hub of a center of excellence where coffee shops are you know, filled with with chance meetings with other entrepreneurs or other or investors. How do we create those situations where we can have those chance meetings? You know, through while you're surfing the internet. Um, how to how to keep in touch with the vastly bigger network? I'm going to touch on this in my talk about how to you know the opportunity for networking is vast, and with that comes you know a ten x. Uh, increase in the number of connections that you could potentially, you know, leverage for your, your objectives, then how do you manage that network? Um, how are we networking at virtual conferences? We're breaking new ground here today, Umbrella, right? I mean, this is incredible. This is, this is the, the, I personally, and I've spoken to many, we had a, a breakout room yesterday that so many people were saying, this is, there's tons of benefits here. Um, of being in Brella. There's no more running down hallways and being stopped by someone. Um, there's no more sort of people not showing up to meetings because it's very efficient. You're always at your laptop and you're always um, able to, to make, make an, a networking connection. But on the downside, there's those, none of those serendipitous moments where you're just sitting on a couch and you strike up conversation with someone next to you. So how do you recreate that? You know, how, how's, what's the online alternative to meeting someone for a coffee? And, and how to overcome those bias, um, you know, for a more investment ecosystem. There's lots of exciting things happening. Uh, one tech solution I've just um, found as well is that one of the barriers we've seen is that I can't see the audience in front of me. I can't see your faces. So I'm not getting any audience feedback whatsoever. Well, technology is <laughs> can solve that for me because teams have developed AI software, which, um, which um, if you've got your camera on, um, mind you, yeah, you know, that it can sense your, your facial um, expressions, your head gestures um, to give me feedback as I'm doing a present presentation. Well, continuing on that technology, I'm going to have next to my the video screen of someone when I'm relating with virtually, I'm going to be able to get maybe a color of green, amber and red of to give me another sort of bit of feedback of how the person's feeling and relating to me if they're open for the, the laptop to interpret their facial features. I mean, you know, it, the technology isn't really there yet, but it's just beginning. It's exciting. And I just encourage you everyone to get umbrella. Um, the, we had an intro with the Brella team and they said it was 34% of all meeting requests are accepted on the Brella platform. It's so easy now to create a meeting, let it happen. Um, just, 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 just try it, test out, send, send uh, the re meeting requests and see what comes back with those investors, with the funders that you're looking for, with the people with, um, great connections who can help you with your startup. The best ideas start as conversations. I know I've gone, uh, sorry, I don't mean to do it. But I know I've gone um, over. So um, I'd like to just end the context setting there, take a, bre a, a breath, and now go into um, to my speaker presentation. And uh, if anyone, well, I, 
we haven't, this is unscripted, but if anyone has any burning questions, please do ask them while I'm just setting up my screen. Okay, so how to be a networking ninja? Again, I don't claim to be a networking ninja, or, but this is my thoughts on the topic. A lot of people have these anxieties, okay? I'm too, you know, I don't know what to say. Uh, I don't know how to find people, you know. Um, people are too busy, like maybe that's one of the reasons why the 40% of people on, on that poll have not reached out because they think people are too busy. I'm too busy. You know, you're getting distracted by other stuff, your work um, your commitments. Um, you just hate that situation of, um, so what should we talk about, right? So the awkwardness of, of Zoom and having a, a networking call as well. There's lots of anxieties in the network. Well, I'm going to just talk about three things, about showing up, which is basically the networking bit of making connections, about how to behave, about being curious in those conversations and then having a system in place. And that's where I'll talk about personal CRM. Um, this is really about how to network, right? I mean, how to grow a network. Um, do your research, first of all, split it up into, into themes. Who are the people that you want to reach out to in your network? Are they investors? Are they early stage investors? Are they grant makers? Are they big bilaterals or foundations? Are they, you know, break up your industry and pinpoint for your objectives where you want to network into. Start, if you, I mean, this is a bit, teaching you to suck eggs, but because I know everyone's at various states um, of their networking journey, but everyone knows someone and everyone has uh, connections. So start somewhere and just start it. And I'm going to try and convince you to make this a habit. Can I get it? Um, the starter email, huh? I'll just give it a few suggestions about how to reach out to someone, cold call, or if you've got a personal um, a connection with that, with someone, then to just, you know, reach out to them, make the ask, a very simple introductory email to someone, so, you know, that I actually help someone in the Ethiopian wash sector um, with their, to help them with their networking and to look for um, you know, not to look for a job, but to look for connections. Um, um, when you're going into a call and trying to build connections, don't try and boil the ocean, but just try and stick to one question. Like, um, this is my experience. This is what I've tried. This is what I'm thinking I'm going to do. Um, what's, what would you do if you were me? Or, you know, how do you get to where you are in your career? You know, just any, just stick to one question. Don't try and uh, cover everything in one call. Um, so and when you go into a networking conversation, make sure you set the context first. Don't say, tell me about yourself or, you know, or just broad. No, bring it down to your situation and why you're looking for, what are your goals, right? It could be networking, it could be raising in capital. This is what you've done. This is where you're at in the process. This is what you're seeking, you know, any advice for me? What should, what do you think I should do? But also to grow your network. The golden question is asking for an introduction. I mean, it, I'm a bit cautious with this because it needs to feel natural. You don't want the other person to feel like they're being used. But if you're trying to grow a network and you have an objective of getting a new job or raising capital or something else that, the more people you um, speak to, the more opportunity that will arise. So do think about looking for connections and who other people who can help with your learning, not other people who can give you a job. <laughs> um, the follow up. So think about straight after the call, um, share your insights, next steps. Um, if they have agreed for an introduction, they can make an introduction and send a forwardable email. That's literally, right, so someone forwards me an email saying, I've done some research, I see you're connected to so-and-so. Um, I'd love to speak to them about this. Do you mind asking them? I can forward that email onto someone and it's simply so easy for me. So make it easy for people to forward an email on to someone in their network who can help you. You might wanna follow up 
uh, three to four days is maybe too soon, but sort of five or six, seven days later is, is about right. And then keep that um, connection alive. Don't just, uh, a network isn't a one-time call and then you never speak to them again. A network is someone that you, is a, a people that you have a, you know, ongoing relationship with. So never leave that network um, dry. Uh, this is an example of affordable email, but you know, uh, I think you guys know what this is. But um, cold connections work as well. It doesn't have to be someone that you're, uh, that you know, or you are being introduced to. Uh, I think Sheena will go into this a little bit as well about how to use LinkedIn. I mean, anyone you can reach out to. Um, okay, the, the, the success rate is maybe going to be 10, 20, 30 percent of people who will respond, but it's a large uh, global network, 4.6 billion people. So, you know, don't be shy. Um, go on to Eventbrite, you know, join a online virtual meeting and network with the other people on that call. Um, networks are everywhere. Um, being curious, um, just make sure that you don't uh, not go into a meeting and not do your homework, like who, where are they from? Uh, make sure you listen and don't feel used. Um, and just be human, right? Don't be methodical, don't just not say anything. If someone is telling you some, uh, about you know, responding to your question, listen actively. And what I find is make it a goal is to play back what they're saying in a summary, like in a one or two sentences. So you're doing the work of listening, processing, and you know, that keeps you accountable to listen but it also tells the other person that you have understood them and they're likely to keep talking. And now a uh, personal CRM. So there's something that um, I recommend in this, in this age when you're growing your network is to have a personal CRM. Uh, there's various platforms who claim, you know, charge you money for this, but you simply need a note taking system or simple as an Excel spreadsheet, but Few things, uh, Notion is a very good tool for this. You can just sort of put down, uh, create a template and every time you have a call, you can just tag them with um, key details that you want to collect. Airtable, this is an example of using Airtable as well. Again, you've got your industries and job functions um, and other things. I use Roam. This is my uh, way of, of a personal CRM where I just have the page for their, um, the name and then just put key metadata um, that I can uh, search on and, and, and so on and so forth. But these are the sort of information you want to keep. Um, frequency of follow up is an important one because you want to either set reminder to follow up or just, um, you know, you know, when you go, you, when you do the review and you should do, review your CRM regularly is to see, right, who, who should I be dropping an email to? Um, who should I look out something to send an article to someone that I know that they'd be interested in? Who's got a birthday coming up? You know, uh, looking for ways to make connection again. Um, so those are the sort of things you want to collect. Um, yeah, and just sort of nurture, nurture. So be curious, listen, and um, commit to um, to one introduction per week. Um, the golden rule, as this is a segue into Peter's talk, but you want to ask, how can you help that person, right? And this is, I'm not stealing a thunder, Peter, I really apologize. This is sort of a segue into your presentation. So this is about how can you help that person, okay? Uh, it's not in it for you, and good things will come back to you. As Will Smith, the Fresh Prince said, if you're not making someone else's life better, then you're wasting your time. Your life will become better by making other lives better. Um, I've got a, um, a newsletter that I will put in the chat if you want to find more. I talk a lot about virtual networking, um, but um, I want to thank you all very much for listening. And I'm sorry I've gone on. Um, I think Sheena's up next. I'm not sure I want to follow after such a brilliant kind of presentation. Maybe I should have gone gone third, but no, that was really, really useful. And some of the things, and I think I'll start by saying some of the things that you've covered are really, really applicable and sort of, um, you know, related to what I was going to say. So don't just think I heard, you know, Peter's great presentation and just kind of copied some of his ideas. I promise you um, um, I did not do that, but I, I will, I, I'll take a sort of um, um, 
a, a kind of a different twist to it. So I'll just start by um, introducing myself. So um, hi, my name's Sheena. Um, as I mentioned, it means God's gracious gift in, in Irish, which I'm quite excited about. No idea why. I don't think my parents even realized it, but I went and Googled it afterwards and I'm quite proud of this. So I'm, I, I say it quite a lot. Um, so I think, um, yeah, so for, for me, it's really funny when I was asked to kind of join this, this session, because actually um, when we talk about like social capital and networking and all the sites, I'm actually not on Twitter. I'm not on um, Instagram. I'm not on TikTok. Yes, I'm too old for TikTok. Um, but I'm not on many of the sites. I'm literally, you know, I'm, I'm not on all the social networking platforms at all. I'm pretty much on LinkedIn and WhatsApp, and we'll go to WhatsApp in a bit. Um, and I'm on Facebook, but barely. So I think my first key message is the social, there are many social platforms and they're all available, um, but it's up to the individual. So you can sort of, and I know some people who are like on all this, on all the platforms and are able to use them and are doing really well. And there are some people that select a couple and are more active on some and less active on others. And that's fine. I think what's really, really important is to figure out what works for you. Whatever flows naturally is the one you're going to be the best at. So if you're going, if, if you feel that actually, oh my goodness, composing long posts or articles, this is just not my thing, Twitter might be better for you. So although my post is about LinkedIn, I think it's quite it's it's quite cross-cutting. And the reason I use LinkedIn is because that's that's the one I, I use. And I always think in presentations like this, it's really good to kind of link um with um with your own kind of personal experience. So I'll, I'll um, so that's what, so that's just brief context. Okay, so kind of, although, so, the, so as I said, I wanted to kind of talk about sort of the do's and don'ts of LinkedIn, but as I said, it's more applicable more broadly. And I think before you start thinking about how to build your social capital, how to build networks, et cetera, it's really, really important. And I, and I use this for quite a lot of everything, pretty much everything actually. And the question is, it's the three, it's, it's the three questions I ask myself, which is why, and always start with the why, and then what, and then finally followed by the how. So if I'm starting with why, and I'm going to use LinkedIn here, why LinkedIn is the first question you have to ask yourself or why Facebook or whatever it is. So it's, why am I using a social network platform? What, what is the point of this? What am I trying to get out of it? Is it to try and get a job? Is it, you know, to raise, to raise funding? Is it to learn more? Is it actually to also showcase what I know and like build myself up as a, th as a thought leader? And at different stages in your life and in your career, it might change. And even within the same stage, it might change. And you could potentially do more than one thing at one time. Um, but it's really, really important to understand why are you using that social media platform channel for and, and 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 what for the other thing is some people say oh you know linkedin is for work and i keep it professional and then my facebook or my you know my twitter or my instagram i'm completely different the point is though you know your identity is connected to all of them so if i'm if if, if i'm looking you know if i'm trying to hire somebody or if i'm going to raise money or if you're or if i'm funding somebody you know when i do a google search yes your linkedin profile comes but so does your facebook and your instagram and etc so in one way although you know although it's possible to have kind of different facets and that's completely fine what a, what a conversation is appropriate for linkedin may not be for twitter facebook etc i think be aware of the fact that um it's all out there and it's all public information to a certain extent um, so how you, you know, how you so think about how you want to portray yourself rather than just being, um, and, and there's nothing wrong with having different forms. Like if you think about it, even in real life, how you are with your family and how you are with your best friend and how you are with your work colleagues may be different. Does that make you fake? If I'm a certain way with my work colleagues and I'm a completely different way with my, you know, old school friends, which one is the real me? Well, the answer is they both are, and that's okay. But just know that in the social world and, you know, everybody can have access to everything. And what you don't want is to seem sort of dis disingenuous or not genuine. And that's the main thing about being online, that element of trust. So how do you make sure, you know, so you have to make sure that you are creating, you know, you're, you're, you're creating sort of a trust around you because trust takes ages to build and very quickly to and very quick to lose. And that's more so um, really, really more so in this in the social world so again not saying you have to be the same in all your platforms but what i'm saying is be conscious that um how you're perceived is 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 everywhere and it's completely different to be different in different platforms or have different kind of perceptions so that's um number one so i think the first question as i said is why why are you um you know why are you 
joining this particular platform. So if you're joining LinkedIn, and most of the times people are joining LinkedIn either to get, it's, it's, it's a professional reason. It's potentially, like I said, to get a job or find out what's out there, learn, learn what's new in, the, new in the space. Now, one of the big don'ts do in LinkedIn, and I get this happen to me all the time, is somebody will message, somebody random, I have no idea and say, I'm looking for a job. I'm looking for a job. I'm looking for a job. Now, I understand that position that you're looking for a job. No, it is awful, especially in Kenya. And I meet the young people and I chat to some young people and it's awful. You've studied, you've tried and you're really, really searching and you're, you just want that opportunity. But actually doing it that way doesn't stand you out in the best possible light. So I'll give you an example of two people. So one person just sort of approached and said, I'm really looking for a job. Fair enough. I understand it, but there's nothing I can do. Another person, let's, what they did is they were sort of on LinkedIn and they were commenting on my articles, following, saying, I'm really interested in this. Oh, you're doing tech, you're doing this, blah, blah, blah. And then when they reached out, you know, I already had a vague idea of who this person was because they'd commented something really thoughtful on an article or a post that I had done, et cetera. So then when they reached out and said, oh, hey, you know, I'm on this space, I'm in this space and I'm looking for a job. I was more inclined, not that I wasn't inclined to help the first person, but you know, when you're so busy, I was like, oh, like I felt like I had a better connection with that person. So it's very important to build that connection. And just because you're not in person doesn't mean it can't be done. And let me tell you something, we're vain. People are vain. Like everybody, as much as they deny it, they look at how many times their post has been clicked and they check their likes and they check their comments. And it's so sad. And I'm like, oh no, no, we don't do that. Yes, we do. We all do that. And who's the first person that have liked my comment or who's the first person that has commented on my post? You check, you know, whether you're like the MD of, big corporate or you know school student you know school girl wearing a new dress you both check who has liked your posts so really really good way to get to, to be stood out is comment on other people's posts it's the same way as saying listen rather than just always talking sometimes you can listen and actively engage online in fact it's easier to even do which is look at what other people are saying comment on them, you know, think about what they're saying, reply, comment, share, etc. Now, again, be genuine. If it's something that you have no interest in, it'll become very, very clear. So don't do it for the sake of doing it. I think the point, the point to make is really, really figure out like, why are you on this? Why are you on this platform? Once you've got the why, all right, what can you then do to be noticed? So if you're on this platform to get a job in the tech space, Find out who are, who, who are the big tech thought leaders, right? So fine, follow Bill Gates and Elon Musk. I mean, they, they share nuggets. They share like great insights, but it doesn't just have to be your global to, um, tech thought leaders, but who are they here in Kenya? Who are they in Africa? Find out who they are. Google top 10 you know, tech founders in top 10 tech th thought leaders in Kenya, in Africa. Find them on LinkedIn, follow them. That doesn't mean you're asking to be connected to them. No, you're following them, which means you'll, you'll hear about what they're saying, what they're reading. And through that, you will learn so much more. You'll get these insights that you won't normally have. So maybe through that, you'll find out that actually, um, this big blockchain committee is going to be set up in Kenya and, you know, they're looking at blockchain and they've, they've, the government set up a task force and it's going to be this. All of a sudden, you know, this interest in blockchain There's already like a government task force being set up and they're looking at private sectors or they're looking at advisors or they're looking at X, Y and Z. Um, so then what you do is then, then, then you're like, right, this is what I need to be focused on. Then you can go and dig a bit deeper. So I think that there's I think the idea is is try and be. Um, sort of creative in how you use the platform. It doesn't have to, and I'm not even going into the business insights of LinkedIn and LinkedIn Premium and, 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 and all the rest of it. Um, I, I, I'm just following the why, what, and how. Um, so, so, so you can use, and then once you found somebody on LinkedIn, again, feel free to use cross platforms, right? Again, you can see what they're doing on Twitter, et cetera. Um, so I'm not just sticking to just LinkedIn. But that's that's what I'm saying. Now, you hear this banded around quite a lot. Your net, you know, your network is your net worth. And you hear that quite a lot. And I'm and I hear that quite a lot. And it kind of reminds me sometimes of data as a new oil. And, and both both statements I agree with. Believe me, I'm not disparaging any of them. But it's how you use your network. It's how you gain that network. How do you you know, how do you utilize that? And there's lots of different ways, and I think, um, and and I and 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 you know, I love the kind of this personal CRM. And again, that personal CRM can the, the personal CRM can be used. The personal CRM can be used for um, um, sort of network. It can be used for your your social media platforms and your social media interactions as well. Um, 
so what I think, I'm sorry, I've just lost my chain of thought, thought, um, thought over there. Um, I think what I was trying to what I was trying to say is um, even within your LinkedIn and your face, your, your LinkedIn profiles, you can really, really see what other people are doing and follow up. So for example, I remember somebody posted an application that was gonna be open on, on assistive tech technology. Like a month later, I didn't hear anything. I went and messaged them saying, oh, I noticed you posted this. What's going on? What happened? Blah, blah, blah. So that follow-up, it doesn't just have to be via an email, et cetera. It could be on a column. It could be on, on, on anything. So yes, your net worth and your, you know, your net, your, your network is your, your network is your net, um, you know, is your net worth, but how you use it um, is very, very important. So I'll just end with a with a with a quick personal note, which is weirdly my my current job. So I'm I'm I, I'm I'm a non techie, and I'm currently the the you know the current I'm the UK Connect country director for a tech hub. I'm an, I'm not even a tech I'm not even a techie. So and yet now people think of me as a thought leader in tech. I'm not. I'm still not a thought leader in tech. But I work a lot with techies and I learn from them and I share, I post, etc. So what I'm saying is you, you can really, really utilize now because I've now connected to lots of techies. People just assume I'm a thought leader in tech, but I'm not. Uh, I follow lots of thought leaders in tech and I learn from them and try and translate techie things to non-tech things. So maybe I'm a thought leader in taking techie stuff and making it simple for people like me who are lawyer, who's an ex-lawyer to understand. So find that um, and utilize that is what I would say. Um, I'll stop now. I think I've done my uh, 10 minutes. So, um, but yeah, I hope that was useful. Sorry, I didn't have a fancy presentation, but I just thought I would, I would, I would talk. <laughs> hey, hi everyone. Um, my name is Peter Nguni and uh, really excited to be here um, with the networking ninjas. Andy, I have to start the session by saying right now in the room, I have a friend who said Andy's podcast is how I ended up in Africa. So <laughs> this could not work out any, any better. Uh, and Sheena, I'm such a huge fan. I think the fact that you're saying you're not a th thought leader in tech is just humble bragging. I think. Uh, you are the thought leader in tech around here. Um, so today, um, I wanna, uh, I, I wanna be the one who's talking about the social part of, you know, uh, the tools that everybody else is not wanting to talk about. That's your Instagrams, your Facebooks, and just kind of like how. Um, how to win in that kind of world. Um, come on. Okay. Can you see my screen, Andy? Good. So uh, I am, I really love networking. And I know for some people, this is something that people don't enjoy. So I'm going to try and just kind of real quickly, um, I, I'm even probably going to take, uh, you know, five minutes and just kind of maybe send happy thoughts to everyone on just how to make it really easy to uh, to be networked. Um, the, the first thing I'm going to say, and this really works for me, is any conversations that I start, I think when you're, you, when, when you're approaching new people in a context that is new, most relationships that we have these days are quite transactional. And as you approach people, they know you want something and you know it, there's no secret that you want something, but you, there's no secret too that most people are here looking for something. Let's take Suncup for example. Um, anyone who I've interacted to, with in the last you know, three, four days, the one thing I'm asking everyone is, I know you're here for some reason, is there any connection that I can make for you is there anyone you're looking to meet? And you, you'll be surprised that I've gotten some really, really honest answers. Yes, I'm here looking to accomplish this. If you know somebody who's in this sector, please send them my way. And if you have already have a decent network, this becomes a very easy way to get quick wins with people. And that way you can move the conversation to a different level where you know, at, uh, people already know that you're coming to them from a point of wanting to see a win-win situation. 
And sometimes the things that you do to help people might be really easy. Like if you work with someone, send a recommendation for them on LinkedIn. I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn. And um, uh, I mean, it doesn't hurt to recommend someone who you know is competent in something they do. Um, and socially, it can be, you know, you're having a function and you're the person who has the unlimited uh, Zoom account. So just volunteer to be the person who's creating that account for people. And that way, as you continue helping people, you know, as Andy was saying earlier, it starts coming back to you, you know, it, and, and it comes back to you in such, uh, in, in, bigger, in bigger measures. The second thing I'd say is set the tone. You know, with COVID and not being around kind of like when we come to Sun Cup and it is a, 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 you know, we go to the big venue and we bring, you know, super speakers and celebrities. And in Kenya, there's something called chochain, you know, so people pump you up for about half an hour before you have a conversation, you have a ton of Red Bulls. That's not happening uh, in a virtual world. So the, the least you can do is at least be the person who's setting a tone for posit pos positivity and be the person who's, be, uh, who's fun to be around. You know, we are, I, I think we are too serious in this virtual world and we need to loosen up and you know, there'll be some tools that I'll give you for how, uh, how to do that. Uh, the third thing I would say is if you're gonna ask people to do anything, give them perfect bite-sized asks. This, the, the first part of perfect is very important. So make sure that you're asking people targeted things that are in their wheelhouse. You know, if I want to uh, start a podcast, I'd be very happy to reach out to Andy and say, hey, Andy, I know you've been doing this for a little while. You know, how, you know, what are the tools that I need to have? What are the, uh, uh, maybe I need some mics, some lights. That's a perfect ask for Andy. It might not be the same for Sheena. For Sheena, I'll ask, hey, I need to meet somebody who is in the agri-tech or agri-processing uh, se sector. I have this new startup that I'm starting and make sure that the ask is very bite-sized, right? <clears throat> make it very easy for people to say yes. That way you have your first win, you know? And once you have your first win, then you can build on that win to get to the second win. And I think, you know, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to networking, some people just go straight for the jugular and you know, there's no, <laughs> there's no walk up to the big ask that you're trying to ask, right? And um, <clears throat> like, like, like I said, you know, it could be like really small ask for people. Um, I have a networking group that I am running and I am asking a huge, you know, I'm asking the four or five people in this group to do something really big. And one of my uh, uh, family members, friends told me, Peter, we need to meet. I think what you need to ask for me or of me is to set up, a, a, you know, let me make a reservation to a place where we can meet. And that's all I can provide for you right now, but it's a good first step. Then we can meet, then we can go to the bigger agenda. So have nice bite-sized ask uh, of the people you're talking to. Number four is compliment. Uh, I lived a long time in the United States and I realized really quickly that, you know, different things happen in different places. If I was doing a good job, I, I, I think I learned how to tell myself I'm doing a good job and not wait for the praise from other people, right? So we live in a world that is devoid of, uh, you know, praise and and people noticing for the work that you're doing and in a virtual world because we are not in the office together or we are not in a conference together you know this has become less and less so you know tell people when they do a good job you know if somebody is posting something anywhere and it's actually a really good productive post like it you know when andy says guys hey tell me who's in the room you know it doesn't cost a lot of your time just to type in hey I'm Peter, I'm in the room, Andy, great job. Um, so in fact, right now, can you all type in and tell Andy that he did a great job and tell Sheena that uh, she did a great job. Um, and I think this is really good. It's a really good way, like Sheena was saying, to get people to know who you are and to get the relationship to go to the next level. So 
the fifth thing that you do is keeping in touch. And I know, especially as Andy was saying, when it comes to raising money, it's more difficult for people who don't keep in touch. You know, especially if you're, in, I mean, this is an impact conference. I have a few friends who make sure that every month, once or twice a month, they have a really, really strong newsletter. And the newsletter is not just like what they're doing for work. The newsletter will touch on everything. That way people can know you as a human being. So this is what I'm doing. We've increased our sales by 20%. Here is a new employee that we really like who we just poached from this company, sorry, this company. And then you go in and say, yes, and you know, my son is playing soccer or my daughter is playing violin and we're really proud of this concert that she's doing, will you come and attend? At this point, people get to know you more as a human being. And this is really important uh, for, from what Shina was saying, sometimes, and I'm guilty of this, there is a real disconnect from the human being that we are on LinkedIn to the human being that we are on Instagram and Facebook. So sometimes you want to merge that just a little bit so that when they finally uh, meet you in another platform, they know, at, the, at least they know a little bit about you to where it's not a, uh, you know, a shocker, you know, what they find out in your other platforms. Um, as you, as you, as you, Keeping in touch, and this is where I agree with kind of like the, the, the personal CRM, make sure you diarize everything, make sure you write what, uh, uh, what, what you, the conversations that you had, uh, indicate where you want to go. And this is really important, and it's been mentioned twice by my previous speakers, is kind of like prepare for your conversation, like do the homework. Um, Sometimes it can be embarrassing if you don't do the homework. I'll give you a good example. There was one time that uh, I was in a group of 10 people. Um, I, I was working at a certain company. There were people from uh, Google, some people from Facebook, some from Salesforce. And we went to visit this one person. He's a celebrity. And I was sitting there and we were having lunch. And I was shocked that <clears throat> everyone around me knew more about this person that we were meeting than I did. So half the conversation, I had nothing to bring to the table because people were, were prepared, not over-prepared, but they were prepared. And it created such a good um, uh, environment and a talking environment to where when it came down to uh, getting into business, you know, it was really easy to, to do business with this individual because we, we met him at a personal level. And, also because it's a virtual world, you'll realize that people do business like that in, 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 in the East, in Russia, you know, it happens a lot, a lot in Africa. So as a human being, you want at least not to be the person who's not doing this kind of homework because that's what everybody else is doing. It's just natural for people to do that. Um, number six, celebrate. Now, just because people are not in the office doesn't mean we forget that they have birthdays. People still have birthdays. We have anniversaries. You know, I start my week to sending happy Monday to half the world and that they hate it, but at least it's a good, <laughs> it's a good way to get the week and the conversation starting. Um, Sun Cup is, is a big event for me, you know, over the last four years interacting with everyone here. And last week I sent some, uh, you know, some uh, e-cards out to people I met in Sankal four years ago, three years ago and saying, hey, Andy, hi, it is our anniversary. You know, I met you at this particular Sankal and, you know, I've gotten some of the most amazing responses back. One of them is like, hey, we need to get on a Zoom call and I'm sorry I didn't get you flowers for our anniversary, but at least it kicked it kicked it kicked back a relationship that had lost we had lost over the period of COVID, and this is a really really strong connection to me. So being able to remember things like those is 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 important, especially for uh, professionals and companies uh, that want to stay in front of other people. Uh, number seven, and this is important because I think where I really thrive is on, you know, all the platforms, right? I think people like, they like to be entertained, like content is king. 
uh, data is king, you know, so give people a, a content to, to, to interact with. So this picture I took in Lamu, and Lamu is gorgeous. There's no other place like it in the world, but there's a, there's a startup we've started that is doing ready to drink tea. And I could send people like this deck talking about, oh, it's a big business, it's $29 billion in the world, blah, blah, blah. But I could send this picture and I promise you half of the people are like, send it to me right now, I wanna buy, you know, where can I buy, where can I order? You know, so when you communicate in ways that are easy for people to, to, to understand, it becomes easy for people to have that conversation. Then, you know, you can then move on to, you know, the ask that you're asking of certain people say, hey, listen, this is really nice. We're enjoying it, but we are struggling with the packaging part of it. Can you help? Right. It's such an easy way to do something different. You know, so yes, FaceTime, send videos, do pictures. People actually do like that. <clears throat> uh, number eight is keep the eye on the price. You know, so while we want to make it really fun, while we want to make it interactive, where people need to like you, you also need to have your big mission still in pictures, uh, in, in the picture. So always be prepared for the conversation you're having, always be prepared for the Zoom calls, be prepared for the meetings that you're having. You know, this is a really big problem for me because I talk too much, learn to listen. I mean, when you're listening, you're solving problems. So listen, 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 and also do the heavy lifting. You know, uh, this week there's a deal we are trying to close and one of the investor who's leading this deal is incredible at making connections but he's also very busy. So our ask of him was like, we know you want to make these connections, but you're busy. What can we do to assist? Can we write the emails and send them in advance? Can we? Can you uh, CC us in some of these things and we'll take the conversation forward from there? So if you want to succeed, people need to know that you're not a heavy lift. You're, the, you're, you're, you're willing to do the job to make these relationships and these networks work. Number nine is expand your network. I mean, we're here to expand the network, so let's expand the network. Network, And the best way to expand the network is actually be the person who's connecting people. Hey, Andy, I know you wanna meet this person. You know, here is the, and I get some of the very, you know, I get some great uh, 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 connections from my friends. They're like, hey, Peter, I have a friend, we went to university together. They're gonna be in Nairobi next week. This is what they're doing. Can you talk to them or can you meet them? And that is a really easy way for you uh, to expand your network. In that same grain, ask to be connected. You know, if you think, if you know two people who, uh, if you know one person and they know somebody else, ask to be connected. And sometimes it's just a question, you don't know it. You just say, hey, who do you know who might be in agro processing or investing in agri tech companies that you might want to introduce me to? And because hopefully your network is networking with other people, you'll find that, you know, if they're honest, they'll say, I don't know anyone. Oh, wait a minute, I just thought about Sheena. Let me make this introduction. And, 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 uh, that's how you make those connections, uh, your, your network expand. And finally, I will say be kind. Times are tough these days. I mean, it, a lot is going on. So be the safe space for people. You know, uh, I think as uh, a minority who's traveling all over the world, I know that it is not, you know, the world can be a really harsh place. So it's something that I'm learning over the last one year is kind of gift people your privilege. So if I know somebody who needs to know somebody else, but I know they don't look, feel like kind of who their friends will be like, and this happens a lot with younger entrepreneurs. They don't speak a certain way. Sometimes they have not gone to certain universities or they don't know where the cool spots to be at, you know, but they're really strong. You know, you should gift that the privilege that the network has given you to to, um, to, that, to that individual. One of the companies that we are working with is Market Force 360, and they were named this year by about four different publications as the, 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 the startup to look out for in Africa. 
And, you know, when I met them a year ago, while they were still as brilliant, some of the networks they didn't have. So we've been able to make those connections. And now you can see that the, the labor is starting to pay off. Again, listen, that's a huge part. Give and give back, because this, you know, there are people who really need your help. I was really challenged over Christmas, a few of my friends, we went to Northern Kenya, it's considered desert. And, you know, we were just going to have a good time only for me to realize that the people I went with carried over 200 uh, kilograms worth of food to hand out uh, 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 along the way. I mean, I just wanted to have fun. And then I find myself in a trip with people who are gonna have fun, but also do really good along the way. And we took a bunch of pictures with amazing people and got to hear great stories. And all it took was a little space in the trunk of the cars that we're using to go and give back. Uh, finally, I'll say be inclusive. You know, make sure your networks are not, uh, you know, are not designed to keep people out. Um, I think that, that that's a whole lesson in itself. But I think with that, I think we can start creating really, really good networks and winning networking. Thank you very much. And if I can help you guys in any way, please let me know. Thank you, Andy, and back to you. Thanks, Peter. And thanks, Sheena. It was just wonderful. Uh, I learned so much. I was taking notes. And it looks like many others would too. So I'm very pleased with that. Um, now we're moving on to the Q&A. I would love to hear some questions from the, um, from the, from the crowd that have come to hear us. Um, if there's anything you would like to say, um, please drop it in the chat or um, maybe stick up your hand um, and we can, you know, bring people off mute one at a time. Um, I'm just going, if you press the reactions button, you can uh, give some feedback. I'm going to give some feedback, some, give some love to Peter for his talk. I was, I've got a little heart on my thing now. Um, I can change that with a with the joy, celebration, ta-da. So yeah, please, um, please come on with your, your questions, raise your hand. Um, thank you, Newton, awesome applause. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, we're taking questions now. The, ha the hand signal, so if you go to press the reactions button, um, there should be, um, I see one hand up, and that's Anita. She's a physical hand up, which is great. Why not? Anita, please go ahead. I, th I thought I'd get into the swing of things. Um, uh, all those presentations were fantastic, and and you know some of those lessons I apply, and some I don't. I think more less at a kind of organized level, and more at a personal level is um, I get all of that, and sometimes it still feels like, oh my god, I'm busy raising my family. I've got the day job to do. And then I'm being hounded on LinkedIn and I'm supposed to also be outreaching on LinkedIn. So it's more about the um, um, getting the personal motivation and focus to, to do that. Any advice on how to do that when it feels like you've got so many demands in other directions. Whereas if you're at a conference, for example, you're kind of immersed in the space. Whereas when you're in your front room or wherever, you know, you're, it's not so immersive. So any idea about how to um, actually get yourself into a psychological space to do everything you guys have been saying. Great question, Anita. Thank you. So it's about habits and routine. Since you mentioned LinkedIn, I can... No, I'm over to you, my panels, my panel colleagues, Sheena. No, 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 sorry. <laughs> no, just because you mentioned LinkedIn, I just wanted to throw one one thing and I, and I get it. I, I, you know, and I suffered, I struggled with this quite a lot when I, I had my baby, um, just, oh, I say baby now, she's like two years old, but basically at the, you know, and, and, and at that time I felt the same sense of kind of being really, really overwhelmed. And I just, I wasn't sure um, how, you know, how I could actually cope with it. And then two things kind of happened. Um, one, I got really bored with just doing baby stuff. So I started going on LinkedIn more so because I'm just like, I'm bored. I need to see what's going on. And I just needed to find out what was, what was happening. And that curiosity kind of, what are people doing? What's trending? What's out there? Um, that, that kind of took over. But more than that, then what I realized is set time, just like we have like a calendar, even though it's personal, it's never just personal. Like your LinkedIn, as much as you think it's my personal time, it's not. It's actually part of your whole, there's no, I mean, work-life balance, everybody talks about it, but where it's really combined quite a lot. 
So I think just like how you block out maybe your Monday mornings to plan your diary, it could be once a week, it could be twice a week or whatever it is. And that's block 15 minutes. And it could be little, little chunks, 15 minutes here and there, or it could be slightly larger where you want to do certain things and plan and just be like, you know, today I looked at this and this was interesting and it doesn't, everything doesn't have to be reactive, but sometimes in my 15 minute scroll in the morning of things, I'll like comment, I'll probably have done so much in that first 15 minutes that people might think I spent my whole time there, but I don't. But it's, it, so it's, and, and number two, follow, if you follow people that you're interested in, so whatever your passion is, if you find your passion and people who are doing your passion on it, it doesn't feel like work. You actually, like there's sometimes like on a Sunday evening where I'll be looking at it and my husband will be like, what's wrong with you? Get off work. And I'm like, oh no, no, it's not work. And he's like, you're reading about tech entrepreneurship, it's work. I'm like, no, this is so cool. This person's doing X, Y, and Z. So I think try and find that balance, formally fit it in your schedule. And then if you find things you're interested in, again, even your responses will become more natural. But I, I, I get your, I get where you were coming from. I, I went through it. It was, um, yeah, it was just a draining space. And you don't want that to be a chore on your to-do list, which is already huge. Great, great, great answer. Thanks, Sheena. Um, Phoebe, you had your hand up. Um... Thank you very much. I, I think I wanted to compliment what Peter said. I crowned it very well and they had a lot of zeal in his presentation. I only missed one word, attitude. And that is what I missed. Because I, I think if he encompassed everything he said and block it out and bring it out through attitude, then it could have completed it very well. But Having said that, I think it was real good, the simplicity, the sharpness of the bullets, and the, the, the simple English that he used. Great job, Peter. So add attitude, and then we are partners in forever. Thank you. Add attitude, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Phoebe. Great, question. Great uh, comment. Any other questions? Um, we'll be breaking out into um, breakout rooms now. Um, and yeah, maybe, I mean, I'll... You know, has anyone else got any questions before we move on? We can come back for some afterwards. But I think what we were looking for now is to is to have a um, go into breakout rooms, and um, maybe I can ask Peter. Sorry to spring this on you, but maybe I think what we you had some really good suggestions of what we could ask people to do in the breakout rooms um, using some of the tools that maybe that we've shared. Uh, thank you, Andy. Yes, uh, when we go out to breakout rooms, we, we, I mean, everyone has an agenda here. I think make sure that you, you know, you self police that people are not talking too much, but ask, you know, ask how you can help, you know, so everybody uh, probably say, this is the one thing that if I do this thing over the next uh, three days at Sun Cup, I would have achieved what I came here to do. Uh, secondly, is let's give each other any tips that we might have missed uh, of, you know, with, with the conversations that we are having. Um, I think, Andy, that for the time that we have, that should, 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 should suffice. Great. Thanks, Peter. So, yeah, on the one hand, you know, what are you here for uh, what, over the next three days? What is your one thing that would be a success for you to get, to get out of from Sankalp? And number two, um, yeah, what are you looking for um, on the longer term? Is that right, Peter? Great, so we're gonna break into groups of five. So it's gonna be small and intimate um, and just go around and let everyone talk and we'll come back. Um, we've got 15 minutes left of the session. So let's do this for 10 minutes. And um, Peter, I and Sheena will be coming into groups and, and help and just observing you. And if you've got any questions, you can ask us then. Good. Well, um, welcome back, everyone. We, we are just a few minutes left. Um, I'm just going to do a quick, a quick um, summary in the best of my ability, but also ask my able colleagues to chip in. But um, I think we've heard that uh, from, well, I started off setting the context and um, trying to portray that we are in a new era and we are in new, we're in new territory and we're all explorers. We're all at the frontier of this, and you know we don't know what's going to happen to the world when things go back to normal, right? So um, embrace it rather than being a um, being afraid and, and and not being sure, right? There's opportunity here for you. 
Um, I then sh shared a few tools about networking and um, how to manage your network, but also nurture your network and also to have those conversations. And, um, and Peter shared us that, that uh, some really good uh, few tips, practical tips, which I'm learning a lot as well about presentation delivery was awesome. Um, just to, you know, how to be a good networker, um, essentially, and have a be a good human being as well. I mean, it's some really good nuggets in there. Um, and then we, we went into the breakout rooms and uh, I had some really great um, shares from people. So yeah, final remarks. Um, Sheena, would you like to go first? Um, no, just, yeah, I just want to say thanks, Andy. I think um, really, really useful, for, you know, I think the context setting, hearing from Peter and getting a chance to just share. I think all I, and, and being in the breakout rooms, though I was jumping from one to the other. Um, yeah, I think for just my message to everybody else is, um, you know, let a bit of your personality shine through in your interactions. It's okay to be a bit personal, to be a bit vulnerable. You know, I used to hide, like, feel like, oh, I can't share certain things, but you can. And it's okay to bring in humor, even though it sometimes can feel risky. It is, there is no work-life balance anymore. It's it's just managing both. They, they really are, you know, one and all. Um, and it's just figuring out how to manage and a really good question around not getting overwhelmed. Really enjoyed the smaller discussions. I hope you guys really make the most of Sankarp. It's a great opportunity. Um, and yeah, thank you just for, for being such a great audience. And I yeah, I hope it was of some value, but I really enjoyed it. So um, thanks a lot. Thanks, Sheena. Peter? Yeah, thank you, Andy and Sheena, for sharing the stage with me. This was really nice. I think my, my, my last thoughts will be, let's be kind. You know, it's a tough world right now, so let's just be kind to everyone. Uh, you know, do the heavy lifting because, if, you know, if it's not me, then who? Um, and finally, this is, a, this, this is a conference about Africa. So let's really figure out in our call, you know, what can we do to help, you know, young entrepreneurs? Uh, what can we do to uplift a continent that has, that's going to be the most popular continent, you know, within the next 10 years? So, you know, guys, as you go home, please be networking ninjas and be kind to everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for showing up. Good luck in your quest. <laughs>